Today, Senate Democrats cleared a major procedural hurdle on their way to passing their urgent and desperately needed COVID relief bill with a tie-breaking vote from Vice President Kamala Harris, but the victory comes after moderate senators demanded the Democrats limit the eligibility for direct payments. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Donald Trump was bad at pretty much everything when it came to politics. He lost the popular vote twice, lost the House in 2018, and the Senate this year got impeached twice and never cracked 50% job approval once. He fell ass backward into the job the way your burnout cousin fell ass backwards into that job dog sitting for a rich old lady who was so senile. She started thinking he was her dead husband, so she put him in her will. And then, like, after only a week of working for her, she died and he inherited a fortune, and now he just drives around town in the back of a Rolls Royce, scream-asking pedestrians if they have any great Poupon. But one thing Trump was good at was taking credit, mostly for things he had nothing to do with. He took credit for a Veterans Choice program that was signed by President Obama in 2014, not just once or twice. He did it over 150 times. And at some point, you just have to tip your hat at his commitment to lying. I've never been that committed to anything in my life. I don't think I even did 150 shows at SNL. I mean, I was there for well over 150 shows, but I wasn't in all of them. For some reason, they just stopped using my John Kerry, even though it's obviously still relevant today now that he's climate czar. I've been emailing Lauren, suggesting that people might want to see it again, but it keeps getting bounced back with what I'm guessing is an auto-generated reply that says, why won't you take no for an answer? <laughs> anyway, Trump took credit for a lot of stuff, so much so that when the first round of COVID stimulus checks went out last year, he insisted that they put his name on them. That's a government check, but it looks like it came from Trump's personal checking account, which I doubt has any money in it, unless it was his secret Chinese bank account. You guys remember that? That tiny little detail that quickly got overlooked, but would have otherwise been a stunning bombshell twist in a HBO prestige drama starring Nicole Kidman as a rich lady with a kid at a fancy school. My husband could never have done this. Ma'am, did you know about his secret Chinese bank account? I need to go for a walk on the beach to think about this. Get me my billowy shawl! Trump's one of those rich guys who's technically a billionaire, but none of his money is liquid. To put a quarter in a parking meter, he'd have to sell shares in Eric. He's the new GameStop. Father, no! <laughs> so Americans got a direct check from Trump with his name on it, and you know what? If that's how Republicans are gonna do things, the Democrats should absolutely do the same thing. Send everyone a giant game show check that says, from your best bud, Joe Biden, for years. Centrist Democrats have had a history of coming up with well-intentioned, but super complicated, hard to understand programs instead of just giving people things they need, like money and healthcare. Instead of saying, here's your check, they say, good news, we passed tax credits for small businesses that retrain coal miners to become pet therapists. But then Democrats seem to learn their lesson. They promised a lot of bold, easy to understand programs during the 2020 campaign that would improve lots of people's lives. And when Joe Biden went to Georgia in January for the Senate runoffs, he made this very simple promise. By electing John and the Reverend, you can make an immediate difference in your own lives, the lives of the people all across this country, because their election will put an end to the block in Washington on that $2,000 stimulus check, that money that will go out the door immediately. That's straight talking Joe. No bluster, no BS. He's the dad who says if you get straight A's, he will take you to Dairy Queen, and when the ink is still hot, on the report card, your elbow's deep in your blizzard. Finally, Democrats promise something big and straightforward that will immediately, materially improve people's lives. And by the way, not only did that promise help win both Senate seats in Georgia, the Democrats' COVID bill is incredibly popular. 76% of Americans, including 60% of Republicans, support it. 76%, you know how hard it is to get 76% support for anything? There isn't even 76% support in my own family for my Al Pacino impression. I mean, the kids love Uncle Al, but wifey is not on board. <laughs> All Democrats have to do now is have the fortitude to stick together, pass this thing, and get the money into people's pockets ASAP. So naturally, some moderate Democrats are watering it down for absolutely no reason at all. President Biden has conceded to moderate Democrats agreeing to narrow income limits for the next round of stimulus checks. Biden signing off on an agreement to tighten eligibility for the stimulus checks in the package. Now phasing out checks at $80,000 for individuals, down from $100,000, and $160,000 for couples, down from $200,000. Around 12 million fewer adults and 5 million fewer kids would get the stimulus payments 
under the new Biden Senate compromise, according to preliminary estimates. A lot of those adults are voters who will now get less indirect cash assistance from President Biden than they did from Donald Trump. Democrats, what's wrong with you? Stop behaving like your own opposition party. Now is the time to go all in while the GOP is distracted by potato heads pronouns. Do you really want to risk being seen as less generous than Donald Trump, the guy who infamously had to shut down his charity after he was accused of using it as a personal checkbook to buy, among other things, portraits of himself and a football helmet signed by Tim Tebow, a guy who was so bad at football he just retired from a different sport. What else did Trump buy with the charity money? A curling stone signed by Johnny Manziel? Seriously, Democrats, who's asking for this? Do you think there's a group of people out there who don't want to check? Everyone wants a check. That's why there are 8 million game shows, including one where you can win money just by hailing a cab. And true story, you guys, I hailed a cab last night for the first time in a year. It was the best. Driver was blasting music. I was watching Taxi TV, saw 30 Rock clip, emailed Tina Fey to say how funny it was, windows down, cold air blasted in. When we arrived, I just strolled right out because in my head it was an Uber. Driver started screaming, hey, hey, hey! I figured he finally recognized me with my mask on. So I turn around and I shoot him a thumbs up, only to see that he is very angry. I apologetically get back in the cab to pay and stay to watch the weather on Taxi TV. New York is back, baby! I mean, it's not, but it's getting closer and that's good. Anyway, the point is, this is insane. It's political malpractice. The bill does lots of good stuff. It's super popular and it gives money to people who need and deserve it. Why would you make fewer people eligible? And by the way, taking checks away from 17 million people would reportedly only save about $12 billion out of a $1.9 trillion bill. That's 0.6%. Congrats, moderates. You really proved your fiscal bona fides. What's next? You're gonna increase the cost of a tasty cake from a vending machine by 25 cents? You really think Anyone you're taking a check away from is going to vote for you because you're saving $12 billion. Well, honey, we won't get a check, but at least they brought the cost of the bill down from $1.9 trillion to $1.888 trillion. One of the main drivers of this push has been West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. Manchin's been critical of the direct payments from the beginning, despite the fact that they're all overwhelmingly popular in polls among voters of every political stripe. In January, he told reporters, I don't ever remember FDR recommending sending a damn penny to a human being. We gave him a job and gave him a paycheck. Yeah, Jesus criminy. Can't we start some infrastructure program to help people get him back on their feet? Do we have to keep sending checks out? Okay, first of all, why are you talking like a character in a Frank Capra film? Jesus criminy. Are you trying to save the old building and loan? Hey, Shoemaker, should I do my Jimmy Stewart? Okay, well, okay, you're waving your arms and it's very unclear what you're trying to say. Does this mean no? Okay, well fine then, just stop moving around. You're giving me vertigo. <laughs> also, do you remember that FDR literally signed the Social Security Bill into law? Did you have a substitute for that entire year in history class? Listen, I'm just a field hockey coach, so all I know is there was a civil war and then Nixon was on laughing. Now we're gonna spend the rest of the class watching Amadeus on Laserdisc. <sighs> Centrist Democrats are also backing off a $15 minimum wage, which has the support of two-thirds of Americans in polls. The minimum wage hike was originally included in the bill, but ruled ineligible by the Senate parliamentarian for reasons that are too stupid to explain. Basically, the gist is Democrats have to use a process called budget reconciliation to pass the bill with only 50 votes because the Joe Manchins of the world won't just nuke the filibuster, which they should. The reconciliation process doesn't allow for so-called extraneous items, and the person who gets to rule what's extraneous is the Senate parliamentarian who advised last week that the minimum wage was not allowed under the rules. And hey, whatever you think of the Senate parliamentarian, whoever they are, they were elected, and elections have consequences. What's that, Shoemaker? You're waving your hands again. Was the Senate parliamentarian not elected? Okay, it's just confusing because you're using the same waving motion you used to tell me I shouldn't do my Jimmy Stewart impression. Oh, help me out, Shoemaker, you, you, old, you old so-and-so. <laughs> well, if it isn't Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> oh, but you know, the man who shall live and live out. What serendipitous. Anyway, the parliamentarian is in fact an unelected bureaucrat who basically just offers an advisory opinion. Republicans fired the parliamentarian in 2001 when they disagreed with the parliamentarian's ruling and no one cared. Democrats have the same power to do the same thing now or they could just ignore and overrule the parliamentarian. That's what Senate budget chairman Bernie Sanders wants to do. The idea that we have a parliamentarian who was elected by nobody, who was simply a Senate staffer, 
making a determination that 30 million Americans are not going to get a pay raise is to me unacceptable. So we're going to win this, if not this week, in the near future. There'll be separate legislation if it's not included in this legislation. Is that what you're saying? I am saying that we are not going to give up. This is not going to be the last vote on minimum wage. Trust me on that. We're sticking with 15 bucks an hour, and I believe we're going to pass that. Yeah, people can't make a living at $7.25. Oh, no, You're right. A... They are in poverty if they're working 40 hours and only making Look, $7.25. That's way, way too low, and it's been like that, as we point out, since 2009. Wow, the minimum wage hike is so popular. Even Wolf Blitzer is on board. Wolf Blitzer, the man never reveals what he thinks. His wedding vows were, it will be very interesting to see what happens going forward. He's an enigma. He doesn't even make facial expressions. The wolf blitzer emoji is just a circle with nothing in it. And it's true. It is cruel and absurd to one, tell people they can live in 2021 on 725 an hour, and two, let an unelected bureaucrat no one's ever heard of decide whether millions of Americans get a raise. And by the way, do you know how hard it must be for Bernie Sanders to ignore someone whose title is parliamentarian? Bernie's the guy who gets annoyed when other people don't follow the rules. I bet he tells people at the co-op to stop squeezing the melons. You get one squeeze, and that's it. They all came in on the same truck, just pick a melon and be done with it. We have a lot of people here for melons. And the current parliamentarian has reportedly issued other controversial rulings on what can be passed under special budgetary rules. She ruled in 2017 that Republicans could add provisions to the Tax Cut and Jobs Act to open the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to Alaska oil drilling. Why is oil drilling in the Arctic allowed, but not a minimum wage hike? Trying to make heads or tails of archaic Senate rules is like trying to put together a shelf from Ikea. I don't understand. It's just an outline of a man with an arrow pointing down and a question mark next to his head, and above it it says, clip hanger. Wait, that's not a clip hanger. This is a clip hanger. <laughs> Sorry, people on YouTube. Sometimes we call back things that aren't in the body of a closer look. <laughs> this is a whole show. But, oh, oh, tell me how to say babar. <laughs> Democrats need to pull out all the stops to pass this thing because Republicans are already making clear they're going to pull out all the stops to block it. Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson, for example, announced that he'd force the Senate clerks to read the entire bill aloud on the floor, a formality which is usually bypassed as a stonewalling tactic. The first way I'm going to resist is I'm going to go down and object to the waiving of the reading of the bill. I will make them read their 600 or 700 page bill. I'm gonna lead the effort to resistance starting today, I think, when they introduce the substitute amendment, I'm gonna make them read that thing. Probably take about 10 hours. You really think that's gonna be a deterrent? We've all been in quarantine for a year. I've done things that are a lot less exciting than listening to a bill get read aloud for 10 hours. One time I just laid down on the floor with a bottle of gin and tried to guess how many layers of paint there were on the ceiling. Turns out the ceiling's wood and I was just super drunk. And my kids left me there. Seriously, people desperately need to help immediately. Are you playing dumb procedural games to stop them from getting it? And just to give you an idea of how dumb Johnson's objections are, yesterday he took the floor of the Senate with a ludicrous poster to complain about how much money was in the bill. If you stack the million dollar bills on top of each other, they would, be, they would stack up to be 358 feet high. So how big would a stack of a billion dollar bills be? It'd be 67.86 miles. So a stack of a billion dollars would actually exceed the atmosphere and extend into outer space. Well, how big is, would a stack be of a trillion dollar bills? Well, it's a thousand times that. So it'd be 67,866 miles high. We're talking about $1.9 trillion, which would stack up to 135,000 732 miles high. Now, Madam President, the distance to the moon is 238,900 miles. So that stack of $1.9 trillion worth of $1 bills would be more than halfway to the moon. Okay, Senator Snapplecap. Save it for your sci-fi movie, Money Stairs to Moon Town. <laughs> Seriously, who cares? Also, where'd you get that dumb poster made? Do you actually force a staffer to go to Kinko's? So, what's this for, a sixth grade math project? No, it's for a congressman. There's a sixth grader in Congress? No, he's an adult. Oh, is it Ron Johnson? Yeah. Democrats have lots of 
bold agenda items that could immediately help lots of people and fix our broken political system, from the urgent voting reforms in the For the People Act, the House passed yesterday, to the COVID relief bill. But they need to stiffen their spines, stop watering things down, and steamroll GOP obstructionists because Republicans are so crazy they're... More than halfway to the moon. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.